this is just going to be all about the wiring and what have you so just going to go straight in there so just going to wire the motor in first it's relatively simple to wire a three phase motor in um, I'll show you how to do that so behind me I've got uh, for the for the um, for the uh, motor I'm going to wire this um, with a just normal three core cable um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the two meter cable because uh, then the controller or the VFD uh, can be uh, you know mounted pretty much anywhere within a, a two meter radius um, you know so if anything does happen um, it can be shut down uh, you know immediately uh, so I'll be doing that so I've just got me you know, me uh, three core cabling just get my uh, my blade and start cutting this up Okay, so in here you'll see that there's like a, a cap. Just gonna try and pop that out. Oh, making it a shorter distance. There we go. So we're left with just a, a hole in there. Just a, place that in here. Oh shoot, I forgot to put the end on. Okay, so that motor is wired up, uh, but I'm going to leave the lid off because, although um, you know they are colour coded, um, there's no colour coding on the um, on the VFD. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use the letters that are on the um, around the wiring of the uh, the uh, the coil uh, the coil windings of the motor. Um, because they are lettered on the VFD, so I'll use the uh, the lettering from the wiring on here uh, to wire that up to the VFD. So we get more than enough cable here. Find cable here to wire the blinking country. Right. Okay, so this is where I wire up the uh, VFD. Uh, so there's a little latch there, I'll just pop that out. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> Okie dokie, so uh, it will leave me with uh, these letters down here. I'm not sure if you can see those. Uh, let's have a look. There you go, look. There's a U. V and a W. Okay. So I'll just get my screwdriver in there. So this uh, this um, this VFD or variable frequency drive is 
uh, single phase input and three phase output and it's rated for I think oh, what does it say here output uh, 400 hertz quarter horsepower 0 0.18 kilowatt uh, but the motor that I was driving it previously with was 0 0.37 kilowatt uh, so yeah so it's, it's, it's a pretty pretty nifty uh, little contraption it's about 80 quid um, if I remember yes it's about, about 80 quid but yeah, it uh, drives, drives pretty well. It's, uh, it's in it's uh, silent too, so. So I need that much off there. Wiring was a bit tight, but yep, yeah, that's in there. Good. Oh, and if you didn't know, there is on the on the bottom of these, uh, on the on the side of the lid on the top of the motor, there's a wiring diagram. It tells you which ones is which. So that's a Delta. This is a star wiring. Wiring. Um, I've got mine wired in Delta type, as you can quite clearly see. A little bit. Just yeah. So I've um, just put some uh, like cable tidy nails in, just to hold the uh, wiring down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire the front end of the VFD, which is basically like the input um, from single phase uh, mains in. I'm going to wire that straight into this power supply here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this um, kettle plate cable uh, straight into the switch. Um, and then that will be wired on top of the wiring on the uh, power supply and I'll be able to earth the power supply uh, earth the uh, body of the uh, motor to the power supply which will obviously go into mains so I'm going to do that next so I've wired this up now just partially so I've got here obviously uh, my uh, kettle, in, uh, kettle socket input um, I've wired the uh, the switch as well, so I've I've got my uh, live in to the switch, and obviously when the switch is flicked, it goes through to the live of the uh, power supply, and powers that up, um, and that's basically how I've wired it. I've I've got the uh, earth. Uh, lead there as well connected to the chassis of the mount because uh, the motors not actually you know physically earthed <clears throat> so uh, I'm about to uh, earth it that way I've just got to wire in the um, crossover and the amplifier as well next so I will do that now okay guys so here is the end product the rotary subwoofer is now complete um, <clears throat> I'm yet to uh, test it well actually to be honest I have tested it once twice um, just like a quick run through sort of um, basically um, it's running alright it runs really well 
um, as you will hear very shortly. Um, <clears throat> other than that, it's it's all right. It's taken around about three weeks, three and a half weeks to uh, build it from ordering parts and making them and what have you. So I've uh, just got it prepared for the oh. There's the cat, she's investigating. Come on, out, come on. Out. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, I forgot where I was now. Uh, yes, it's taken uh, around about three weeks to build it uh, from start to finish. Um, or, like, say, ordering parts and putting it all together and what have you, and making things and all sorts of stuff. Um, Dad, my dad uh, gave me a little bit of some input, made these uh, wires for me uh, while I was eating tea last night. So, <clears throat> thanks to him. Anyways, um, I will plug this in and uh, give it a quick, uh, quick uh, test. So, switch this on now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm just going to put it on a very low RPM. I want to show you something. Okay, a bit faster. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear that. I'm not sure if you can hear it. But there's a little bit of a tapping going on. Basically what that is, is because the blades are, they've got like a, <clears throat> I don't know, what would you say, like a, it's just like a bushed joint. So it's, you know, it's flexible inside the, um, the holder of the actual, um, the head of the uh, <clears throat> rotor. Um, so it can, you know, flex around. So when it's at low RPMs, uh, you can see that one there just flopping about at the top. So yeah, when it's at low RPMs, because the weight is uh, unevenly distributed with the centrifugal forces, um, they they start flapping about like this, which is why they make up that uh, like a, a a banging noise at uh, lower RPMs. It's a little bit more persistent when you get a little bit faster, but as soon as you get to uh, you know, like a high RPM, <clears throat> um, the uh, the rattle goes away, and it's actually really silent. Okay, so we are running at 20 hertz. Nice and smooth. I've actually made this quite well. I'm quite surprised at how well this is. Uh, this performs. So this will be the maximum RPM um, that this unit will do. <clears throat> so that means that uh, ideally the maximum amount of um, well the maximum frequency that this should be able to handle is um, 20 hertz as well um, 20 hertz input uh, to the driver but it's, if they uh, don't want to run it that fast obviously uh, they can just turn it down but the uh, the lower that they turn it down, um, you know, the maximum input obviously decreases as well. Uh, the maximum frequency input decreases. <clears throat> so it's running reasonably well. Just give you a so you can hear it knocking. But uh, if I bring that forward, and you can't really tell the blades are too dark.
Yeah, so it uh, works well. Quite chuffed with it. So that should be able to produce some seriously low frequencies. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, plug my phone into it and just put some some sine waves through it. <laughs> 